Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Climbing Stairs. It is an easy. Let's get right into it. You are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Example one, we want to reach step two. And there are two ways to do that. We either go step one and then another step from there, so one plus one, or we go straight from the ground floor right to step two, and these are our two ways. Example two, we want to reach step three. There are three ways to do that. We go one plus one plus one, or we go to step one straight to three, or we go to step two and then to three. But we can actually notice something here, right? To get to step two, we go from step one and then go another step or we go straight to two. And these are being used here again, right? One plus one and two. This is to get to two and then an additional step will bring us to three. And this makes sense because it's not asking us how many steps does it take to reach the top. It's asking how many distinct ways can we climb to the top. So let's say I had n equaling five. How many ways can I get to step number five? Well, before that, how many ways can I get to step zero, to one, to two, three, four, and then five? If I am on step zero, I'm on the ground floor. There is, There are zero steps needed to get to zero, right? So that means there's one way to get to zero. There's just a step of zero. That means there's one way to do it. How many ways are there to get to step one? I can only ever take one step or two, that means I will have to do a step from ground to my current one because there's no negative, there's no basement, I can't take two steps. This means that there will be a total of one way to get to one. How many ways are there to get to two? I can take a step of one or a step of two. If I take a step of one, I go from one and then to two. And we know there's one way to get to one. Or I can go from zero to two, and there's one way to do that as well. So there are a total of two ways to get to two. What about three? How many ways can I get to step three? Well, I already know I can only climb one or two steps. So to get to three, I can only come from one or from two. If there is one way to get to one, there is at least one way to get to three because I take two steps from one, get to three. If there are two ways to get to two, an additional one to whatever those ways are would get us to three. So all we have to do is add these two numbers together and that's how many ways we can get to three. To visualize this a little bit better, let's say to get to one, I only need to take one step and that's going to be a step of one. To get to step two, I can either take the ground floor up to two, so I just take two steps, or I go from one and then an additional of one to get to two. How many ways can I get to three? I can either go from one, all the ways to get to one, plus an additional one step, which will bring me to three, or I take all the ways to get to two. Sorry, this should have been step of two to go from one to three. And then from two, it just takes an additional step of one to get to three. So there are three ways to get to three. How many ways are there to get to four? All we have to do is add two plus three and we get five. There are five ways to get there. So for four, if we go from step two, all we have to do is add two to go from there to four. And then if we go from three, all we have to do is take an additional step to go from three to four. That means there are one, two, three, four, five ways to get to four. And same with five. Again, all we have to do is take whatever index we are on, the index before that, and two before that. Add those together will equal the value at our current index. So there are eight ways to get to step five. And we can see that from here. We know there are three ways to get to three. Two steps from three will get us to five. And we can also get to five from four by taking one step from four. So all we have to do is plus one, plus one, plus one. And these are all distinct ways to do that. So this is all we are doing. 
this is going to be the logic for this. In a list, we are going to store all the distinct ways to get to a certain step, where the steps are represented by the indices. We know in the beginning the steps, or let's call this ways. This is going to store a list of all the ways we can get to a certain step. So for index 0, it's 1. For index 1, 1. Index 2, 2. These are some things we know, but anything 3 up until n, we will have to loop through and calculate. So for index in range 3 to n plus 1, because it's not inclusive, and instead of calling this index, let's call this step. All we have to do is add to ways whatever is the step before us and the step to before us. So ways of step minus 1 plus ways of step minus 2. All we do is return step of n. So how does this look like? If we use the example we were using right here, n equals 5, let's go line by line, right? Ways is currently, ways is currently 1, 1, 2. Now for step in range 3 to 6, let's loop through. Ways dot append, so we start with 3 first. Step minus 1, step minus 2. So 3 minus 1 is 2, whatever's at index 2, and whatever is at index 1. So this is index 0, 1, 2. So we add to that two ways. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and this is index 3. Now we go in this loop again, and now we are in step 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3, 4 minus 2 is 2. What are the values of those indices? We add them together and append that two ways. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And we add that over here. This is for step four. Now for step five, we do the same thing. What is at index four and what is at index three? Add those together, we get eight. And all we have to do is return step at n. We return eight right here. And you know, if n was two, we actually wouldn't even have to go in this for loop. All we would do is return at index two, zero, one, two. We know there are two ways to do that. So let's go ahead and run this code. One time error. This is not step. This should be ways. We return at the index for the list. Accepted and submit. And accepted as well. So for space and time complexity, because we go through from 0 to n, our time is going to be O of n. And for space as well, we store an entire list of ways ranging from 0 to n. So this is also O of n for space. But can we do better? Can we do better than O of n for time and better than O of n for space? What do you notice here, right? This sequence right here. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Does this ring a bell? This is something called the Fibonacci sequence. All the Fibonacci sequence is, is you take two numbers that were right before you. So the number before you and two before you add them together to get your current number. And that's exactly what this problem was, right? Climbing stairs. With the Fibonacci sequence, you probably heard of something called the golden ratio. It's about 1.618. And if you multiply your current number by the golden ratio, you get the next Fibonacci number in that sequence. And since there is a formula for that, there is also a formula to find the nth Fibonacci number. And I have that listed down below. So if we plug in our n to this formula, we will get the Fibonacci number at that index. And the real Fibonacci number goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, so forth. But the thing is, it starts at 0. Here we start at 1. So we want to instead at finding position n, we want to find it at position n plus 1. We're just shifting everything down. So if we plug in n plus 1 for this formula, we can return the answer in O of 1 space and O of 1 time because it's just an arithmetic expression that needs to be evaluated. And if you want to look up this formula, you can definitely look it up online. But if we run this code, it is accepted. And if we submit, 
it is also accepted as well. And this solution is actually constant space and constant time. So if you have any questions either with the solution or the one we did previously, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Oh, <laughs>